Hey guys, uh, Umbalol again, and in this video we're gonna take a look at the Phoenix protector and uh, its uh, string encryption. So this is gonna be another video in the deobfuscation series. And uh, yeah, let's get started with this. So this is our application. This is not obfuscated right now, so we're just gonna do that real quick here. Uh, and we're gonna set it so it only string uh, obfuscated strings here, not the control flow or names. And uh, just select the folder here. Okay, so this is uh, our uh, obfuscate application. So I can show you how the strings looks here. Okay, so here you see uh, this is the strings, and uh, it's basically every time it's loading a string, it calls this method. But this is not viewable in Reflector. But anyway, these are the, these are the encrypted strings, so this is our target to decrypt them and replace them with the original strings. But to view the uh, decryption function here, we need to remove the control flow, the uh, obfuscation, and we can do this by simply running it through default dots. And I'm sorry for not showing you how to do this manually, but hopefully I'll do that in a later video. But for right now we're just going to do it this way. Okay, so let's remove this and load the clean one and check out the uh, string decryption method again. Alright, so here we can see that it's uh, all working now. So we can just copy this because we're gonna need the, this method to decrypt the strings. And just paste it in here, we can just do this. And we can rename it to decrypt string and yes, string. Okay, so now we're able to decrypt them, but uh, that's just a small part of the whole thing. We need to locate all strings, and also uh, we need to uh, replace them with the real, real strings. So we're going to take a look at the IL code here. Okay, so you see every time we load the string, it uh, makes a LDSDR opcode, and then a call to the decryption module. So basically what we want to do is just look for all the LDSDR and uh, yeah we're gonna decrypt them instead of uh, running it through this method we're gonna do it beforehand in our own application so yeah let's get started with this so we make another method here it's gonna take an assembly definition as parameter and we're gonna loop through all the types and all the methods to find the instructions. So for each modif in modules type def in types methods and we're just gonna make sure that the method has a body. So um, if the body, uh, if the method doesn't have a body, we're just gonna return. Sorry, we're gonna break this loop here, so it doesn't continue. But if it has a body, we're gonna loop through all the instructions. Okay, so Manadecessel is very powerful when it comes to modifying the bodies of his uh, methods. So this is not gonna be too hard actually. Uh, so. As I told you earlier, we're looking for the LDSDR opcodes. So when we look through the instructions, we're gonna make an if statement here. If uh, actually we can just do if not instar opcode equals codes LDSDR. We're just gonna continue. All right. So if it's not an LDSDR, it's gonna continue. But if it's an, uh, but if it is it's gonna jump to this code here. Okay, so just gonna do this. Encrypted string equals instar operand as string. And we're gonna decrypt that string. We just 
the call to our method that we um, placed in there earlier. And we'll, let's see if this works. Just put a return so we can put a breakpoint here. And we're just gonna, we're not gonna do this. Sorry, I just need to copy the path here. Uh, let's see the name again. Uh, we'll, we'll pick the clean one here. Alright, so let's see if this works. Alright, so this is an encrypted string. It's this strange string here that's not readable. But the decrypted string is a good string which we can read and understand what it does. So basically the decryption of the strings are is working fine. And it finds the strings good. But um, now we need to replace the, the strings in the method. So alright, so the current instruction is the LDSDR. So we can basically just uh, replace the operand with the decrypted string instead of the encrypted. So just do insert operand equals decrypted string. And after we've done this, we can check the, uh, the uh, assembly, see if it works. So let's just save it. Gonna save it this name but with a 2 behind it so we can differentiate it right let's run it see if it no errors that's good let's check the clean 2 here and if you see where it started now it still has these strange strings let's just take a look at this inside Okay, so we can see that it uh, decrypted the strings and replaced them successfully, but it's still making a call to this method. So basically, it's just re encrypting them when you run the application, so they're gonna be strange again. So we need to remove the call to method zero from each string, and we see it's just the instruction right after the LDSTR, so it shouldn't be too hard. Okay, so let's do go into the code here again. Alright, so in mono.sl you can just type uh, uh, insert.next and you will get the next uh, instruction. So this should be the call to the method. And uh, actually we don't even need to make it a variable variable or whatever it's called here. We can just do body instructions.remove and instruction.next and this should remove the call. So let's try this again. Oh right, you can't modify the uh, instructions list here uh, enumerable when you're in for each loop, so we need to change that to a four. And try it again. Yes, that worked better. Let's check the file here again. And it runs fine. And uh, yes, the strings looks better now. So let's open it up in reflector and see what happened. And in oops, in C sharp code. There we go. That looks much better. There's no call now, and it's just plain old strings here. And uh, you can see here, all the strings have been decrypted. So basically, we've done most of the work now. All the strings are decrypted and working fine, but we still have this little decryption method here. And we want to clean this out as well, because when you deobfuscate it's good to clean the whole assembly from all the protections and just leave the raw assembly left. So we're going to do that as well. Okay, so we need to... Well, this is the call instruction, so we can get the target of the call, which is the uh, decryption method. Uh, call target equals instrument next up around as uh, method definition. Let's just debug that, see if it works. Yes, it gets the method zero. So, now we just need to remove this. We actually need to save this, so we can do this instead. Method definition called target equals null. And just... 
I'm not sure why that doesn't work. Uh, oh, I <laughs> forgot something in the name there. There's, you could do this better way because this time it sets the call target every time it loads a string, but it's it's gonna be fine for now. So we just do uh, this. All right. So now now that we have the call target, this is the decryption method. So after all the looping's done, we're gonna remove it. So basically, we just remove the whole type that it's in because it's just the type only contains the decryption method so we can do this uh, it's in the main module so we can just type types um, but remove and the call target declaring type and this should remove the declaring type which is the basically parent type of the method Oops, so let's check this again. You see, this is the method here, and the declaring type of this is the G class 0. So it will remove this whole thing here and uh, just leave the clean assembly behind. So let's try this. Sorry, I think I. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Let's run it again. Okay, no errors, that's good. It runs fine. And let's check it in reflector here. And yes, the method is all gone. So now basically we cleaned the whole assembly from the uh, Phoenix Protector obfuscation. And it's working fine. And uh, yeah, in the next video I'll probably cover cold wall string obfuscation, obfuscation, which is a little bit more advanced, but I think I'll be fine. So uh, yeah, see ya.